So now in this video, we're coming back to the circuit of the last video. So this is a comparator circuit made with an op amp. I forgot to write op amp on there, uh, but uh, oh well, it's not a huge deal. But in case, when I set the uh, trim pot lower than half of the supply voltage because I set the inverting input to half the supply voltage, trim pots to the non-inverting input, if I go less than half, of the supply voltage the output goes low if I go more than half of the supply voltage the output goes high so it's just comparing the two voltages and uh, setting the output more like the non-inverting input uh, pretty straightforward so in any case now I have uh, my oscilloscope because there was uh, some things that uh, were going on first off let's look at the power side uh, supply so power supply is set to 5 volts right now and uh, you can see we've got about about eight milliamps, about seven milliamps at uh, that setting when the output's high. There you can see the output's high, and then I'll turn the uh, trim pot down. The output goes low. So I thought this would go down to the negative rail because this is a single supply op amp, and uh, that's what the output does. But there is impedance. There's stuff within the integrated circuit probably holding it up because of our load and uh, in any case voltage isn't going completely to ground that's why it's still holding the same current you can see even though we have uh, uh, right now it should be uh, zero volts it's up about one and a half if I turn the uh, trim pot up now instead of five volts it's like three and a half approximately we might as well uh, move in a little bit so we can see that that difference there so now first we're good at 5 volts here so these are all just observations I made like the last 20 minutes so I did notice we had the same current whether it was high or low which was odd but uh, now you can see at uh, 7 volts and that's probably about the maximum we should do with the resistors we have that LED is lit a little bit now that one's lit a little bit when only one should be lit so it worked good at uh, 5 volts now let's go to uh, 3 volts and uh, technically if uh, this was a, a, a perfect comparator it shouldn't really matter the uh, voltage we do need a certain voltage to get the LEDs to light up though and 3 volts should light these LEDs there you can see that uh, we don't have enough voltage looks like we're right on the edge like literally on the edge and then uh, we go here this is from the uh, positive supply right there so that's close to the negative rail so that LED is lighting up so there you can see we're doing better with a low signal at the uh, 3 volts if we try to go to uh, a high output there's, there's not enough that 3 volts so this is a low uh, power uh, integrated circuit. Oh, I also tied the uh, two inputs over here to the positive rail. Usually with uh, integrated circuits, you don't want to leave inputs floating and no current goes into the inputs, but uh, usually you want to uh, tie them, but I don't think you absolutely need to with this component. But uh, moving along, so we got that three volts. Now, let's go back to five. And uh, so I already, we saw there's limitations. Now, it's commonly known not to use op amps as comparators. They, they will work, but not as good as comparators. And uh, so some people are really adamant about not using them. Other people are like, it's perfectly okay to use them. Again, as you can see here, for what I wanted, it worked just fine under this circumstance. So now the output's high, it's going to the negative rail, and now the output's low, it's coming from the positive rail, and current sinking into the output. Output's actually the top pin there. So, in any case, this is under load. Once I yank that uh, resistor, now you can see the output is going to ground. So I'll yank this one too. And uh, it's a five volt supply right now. We'll set the output high. There you can see it's still not getting five volts. It's uh, going up to about four right there. Each square here is one volt right there so 
That's the property of a single supply, is that it can go to a ground. And if it was a rail to rail op amp, again, you got to read all the fine details. But if it was rail to rail, then it would go from a zero a volt, the output, to five volts, the VCC, the positive supply up there. So, in any case, when it comes to these components, uh, you know, look at the circuits that people present to you and whatnot. Read the data sheets and uh, all this stuff. There's a lot of stuff to learn about op amps. They got a lot of peculiarities. The data sheet will probably have a schematic of all the transistors and stuff inside. As you learn transistor circuits more, the uh, different types too, because they, they may not be bipolar junction transistors, you'll understand more of why the output does what it does and uh, whatnot. But in any case, here it looked like it wasn't a single supply, but that was just because the load was uh, demanding uh, too much current probably. So we could try lower current loads, but if we put the output to a transistor, then it would probably fully turn the uh, transistor on or off depending on what you need to do at uh, zero volts. It could probably do that uh, perfectly fine. But uh, in any case, I just wanted to put this video out there. I wasn't planning on this video and I just did a little bit of testing, just uh, my curiosity, maybe ideas for future videos. And uh, I realized this fits in really well with oddities I noticed in the last video. So I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out the uh, other videos I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell. I'll see you in the next video.